Hi everybody, Mike from RMT Family here. In this video, we're going to take the Tesla Model 3, a 2018 dual motor long range. Uh, on the same trip as we did with the Chevy Bolt, with our 2020 Chevy Bolt. We're gonna take it uh, over the Continental Divide to Wolf Creek from there to Helena and then back over the Continental Divide uh, to home. And uh, I thought I just wanted to show the differences between doing trips with the Chevy and trips with the Tesla because it is different. Obviously, uh, the Tesla is a lot more money. We paid $60,000 for the Tesla. Um, the Chevy was listed, was MSRP. 40,400 we paid 25,500 for it so that makes a difference between the Chevy and the Tesla of $35,000 so we definitely expect a lot more for $35,000 uh, the Tesla is larger it's more comfortable has many more convenient items it's uh, overall a much nicer traveling car than the Chevy and it has a larger battery pack uh, it is rated at 310 miles EPA, while the Chevy is rated at 259 miles EPA. So in this video, we'll see the differences uh, in traveling. We done the same trip to Wolf Creek and Helena before in the Tesla. While there was no supercharger in Helena, that made it a little more difficult back then too. Now that there is a supercharger, this is relatively easy traveling so it depends if you can spend the extra $35,000 or do you need to spend it because if you live somewhere where you got more charging opportunities the Bolt will do great uh, on the other hand if you drive long distances all the time uh, Tesla could be more your thing especially if there is no uh, DC fast charging opportunities for a CCS but you can find superchargers from Tesla almost anywhere but well now let's go on a trip It is uh, 6.46 a.m. Um, here it shows about, what does it show? 33 degrees outside. The house showed 31, so it's just right around freezing. We have 71% charge. Shows a blue snowflake. Now it got dark in here. Um, can't really see a blue line on here it's hard to tell there's a very little bit of the battery capacity that we can't access currently because it's cold it's not very cold out so that should go away pretty quick um, oh we're plugged in so I can't throw her in drive and we can't look at the reach and the restriction at this point but so we got uh, a few hours till 10 and um gotta set the charge current a little higher here or we're not gonna get to full <laughs> so let's crank this up up oh, it stops at 28 there what the heck uh, let's see how oh, it's crank it up slowly um we gotta go up to 100 percent well, we'll see if we can get this up to 100% and we'll be leaving in about uh, three hours or so, around 10. Also, we can see there's that amber arrow facing down, which is a download, software download. So we'll let it download too, as long as it's sitting here, I guess. And it is. A little chilly out so battery is heating currently it's telling us it's over six hours remaining but for some reason it doesn't want to crank up here all the way up 
that is a little odd but uh, I'm pretty sure we'll get up to 100% or close to it we only got uh, about 165 miles to go I guess somewhere around there so we'll be able to make it okay so it's uh well now just after 10 been over a couple hours here since we uh looked at this first earlier this morning um even though it's at like six hours earlier obviously made it to 100 percent there it still shows 30 minutes so it's actually still balancing cells at this point <clears throat> and uh i'm not even sure what this relates to in regards to mileage let's see here display uh, distance and uh, so 297 miles that's what 100% uh, supposedly is right now the car is rated at 310 miles and a lot of people freak out right now and say, oh, I got 13 miles battery degradation or something, which is not quite true. This 297 miles there doesn't mean very much. Um, as you have seen in other tests, um, like with the Bolt on the last one that we did this same trip that we're going to do right now with the Tesla, uh, it showed like 154 miles, but we did over 165 miles easy on it um, so and now came up to 298 it's still at a hundred percent because it's still balancing cells so um, this number is in a Tesla means the world to people but really it doesn't mean anything this here is what matters you got a hundred percent if you really want to know um, where you're at, you uh, really have to look at uh, the navigation and use uh, use your navigation, and that will give you a great indication of where you really will be when you get there. So anyway, we're still plugged in, obviously, but it's ten. We gotta leave. Um, gotta be in town here in about thirty minutes, and uh, so yeah, we'll unplug the car. We'll get going and uh, we'll see. I don't know where we'll stop or what the heck we'll do. Uh, we'll definitely be stopping in Wolf Creek. So we are at, I think, the same place we stopped last time with the Bolt. That was the first stop, I believe. Not 100% sure. But we're at 66% uh, now. And uh, this here is the consumption for the trip that Tesla provides so when you use the navigation you can go in here and it tells us we should get there with 32 percent and right now we're at 66 and you can see that we followed exactly with that green line so far so right now uh, if we keep going just like this, we should be there and have 32% left. Um, if we actually go off this line, it will plot another line, a different color, so we can see um, if we do better or worse. So you can keep real good track of uh, your consumption here and see if you can make it or not uh, for your trip um let's see here there we go um so since last charge we drove 81.2 miles used 23 kilowatt hours and we are cruising at 286 watt hours per mile that's not too bad um it is now 43 degrees out when we started it was just around freezing or so um we're also going uphill again we're working our way up to about 4400 feet again and then we just have the other climb over the pass so at this point we're cruising much faster than we used to with the bolt 
with the Chevy Bolt when we did this trip we were going between I think on here 60 and 65 as well as on the interstate we were going slower right now we are actually right around the speed limit so with the Tesla we're not going any slower we have a much larger pack and it seems or the Tesla is just more efficient at higher speeds the Bolt does great at lower speeds the Tesla does better at uh, well does better compared to the Bolt it does better at higher speeds so we'll keep cruising here we just have a little bathroom break and uh, we gotta go way up there way back there is the pass we gotta go over second stop just over the pass and you can see here now the green line and the gray line are not matching up anymore and it's projected now 29% arrival instead of the 32 so we used a little bit more juice we're at 38% we've been driving a hundred and forty point nine miles used 42 kilowatt hours and are running at 298 watt hours per mile. Uh, we just climbed the pass, so we went over 5,000 feet now, and that used a little bit of power there. But now it's gonna go downhill, so we may actually gain some over here again. And uh, well, we should still arrive with 29%. So no problem whatsoever. We've been going the speed limit of uh, 70 miles per hour.
we arrived in Wolf Creek, a 177.4 miles, used 49 kilowatt hours, ran at 278 watt hours per mile, so not too bad. It is about 54 degrees here, and we got 27% left. So here we're a little bit off by 1% of the projected uh, arrival, but not too bad. So yeah, um, traveling with the Tesla is uh, definitely easier. I mean, it's got a bigger battery pack than the Chevy Bolt. That makes it a lot easier. We got 100 miles left, so we don't need to charge here. I would have uh, the extension cord and the adapter with me. Um, but they would have to move uh, the dryer out of the way so we could plug in. So I decided not to because we got 100 miles left and Helena is about 30 miles away. So there's no sense in uh, making them go through that hassle. And we have a supercharger in Helena so we can charge up in uh, 30 minutes or less to where we need to be to make the trip home. Uh, yeah, the Tesla obviously still beats the bolt for traveling you can do it in the bolt but you got to go slower with the tesla we've been going the speed limit on the interstate so we went i 80 on the interstate we were 70 on the rest of the trip on the highway which that was the speed limit with the bolt we had to slow down to even make it so here it was no issue whatsoever um we had the climate control set to 70 degrees all the time it's set on auto and in the morning it was a little colder now here later it seems like maybe the air conditioning had to come on because we have beautiful sunshine and uh, it's warming up here especially in the top half of the car so we'll uh go visit here with our friends and then we'll uh a little later we'll go to Helena we gotta run some errands still today and then tomorrow we go do the doctor's visits for my father-in-law so before we leave we'll update real quick and we'll go from there okay we're leaving Wolf Creek we're down to 23% sentry motors on and the dog was running around the car so that he used a little juice um, going to Helena from here and uh, shouldn't have a big problem. 23% is uh, over 60 miles, so it's only about 30 away. Just got to the hotel, checked in, and now we're actually almost already at the supercharger. And you can see it's preconditioning for supercharging, so it can charge faster. At this point, we have about 212 miles there, almost 60 kilowatt hours used, and we average 282 watt hour per mile. So we'll be dropping the car off here and. Uh, then my friends will take me over to 
Lowe's, they need to go shopping and I gotta help them find a certain product there real quick. And then they'll bring me back here and uh, I'll go back to the hotel. So the supercharger is coming up. It is right over there. So we'll back in there and plug her in. We get the battery very low message. So 211.7, still about the same here as we just had a second ago. Let's go plug her in. So it's super easy. Just press the button, the door opens, plug it in and done. need to know that anymore and here we go it's ramping up to charge it's charging at 123 kilowatts so it's adding over 500 miles per hour right now so this won't be very long charge here to get us going it says 55 minutes but that will be to 100 percent and we don't need to go there So this is actually a version 3 and it was just up over a thousand miles per hour charge here. We're pushing 240 kilowatts and uh, so we already have 4 kilowatts in in just like a minute or so. So this is pretty cool. This charger is a little noisy but it's got the skinnier cord here so because they're cooled and that's why it makes a little noise but it's pushing power super fast so this will be a really quick stop um we'll have plenty of power by the time we get back here it is just after 7 a.m we're looking at the app here i'm too lazy to walk out there right now <laughs> um we got 83 percent left in the car uh, sentry mode was on so the car was uh, parked outside here and used a little power last night when I pulled in forgot to see where it was at but I don't think it used very much as we were just at about I believe 92 or so from the supercharger ran around town got the car washed um, got some dinner this and that but uh didn't have the need to plug it in at all the supercharger took care of this we're still at 83 percent um we may or may not top off um today so here uh, seems to be not sure if you can see that uh, 30 degrees out there this climate interior is 30 degrees anyway so and it's, it's this app is really super nice uh, very intuitive very easy to use um, really like it so we can preheat the car right from here before we leave obviously the car is not plugged in so it's a cabin preheat but uh, the car can also preheat the battery as well um, if needed it will automatically do so so uh, but for now we're not really doing anything gotta go get uh, some breakfast we have another almost an hour before we have to leave here and then we gotta go do the appointments this morning and then we'll see and we gotta get back home we'll see where we're at before we leave uh, if we want to add a few more percent here of charge or not we'll see uh, i'll just gonna put it into the navigation on the car at that point and see what it says all right it's uh 10 30 a.m and we're done with our runarounds here in helena um i programmed the navigation to going home we're currently at 
and the navigation or the energy screen for the navigation shows 78% to start. We should get home at 22%. So shouldn't be an issue. Uh, we've been running around town a little bit this morning, to, uh, doing the errands we needed to do, going to see the doctors. Um, we're done now. Uh, we stopped in between, we had about an hour. So we stopped at Starbucks again, as we did with the Chevy Bolt. We plugged in just for shits and giggles. We really didn't need to. Uh, we had like, I think about 78% at that point or so. And uh, we just plugged in, got a coffee, walked around the park just to, uh, yeah, spend some time outdoors, do something good while we have to wait anyway. And uh, we got, I think, about three kilowatt hours or something. So it went up to, it just made 80, barely 80%. And uh, so now we're here at the last stop and we'll... Uh, Got to get over the pass from here and get down to the interstate and then get home. And uh, shouldn't be a problem according to the navigation screen here. We should have uh, plenty of juice left to make this trip. home got here with 21% um, I had to stop and drop off my father-in-law so this uh, screen did reset at that point um, but uh, I believe it predicted 28% to get here or something so we didn't do too bad we'll come in a little bit lower uh, we charged up last in Helena at the Starbucks real quick on a charge point level 2 just to add a little while we have to wait anyway for the next appointment and so since we drove 145.9 miles used 39 kilowatt hours and we came out at 270 watt hours per mile that is not too terrible at all uh considering that uh, m most of it was like the first part uh, over the past was pretty much 70 miles per hour and then on the interstate it was 80 miles per hour to get back here. So the total trip was 381.2 miles. We used 107 kilowatt hours and we averaged 280 watt hours per mile. Again, not really bad considering we have speed limit 80 and 70 and we were going that. We didn't slow down at any point really. I mean, speed limit if, the, if we were po if it was possible to go to speed limit we did climate control was set to 70 on automatic the whole time so i think we did uh pretty good um no complaints so again let's look back real quick and see what we learned from this trip and compare it a little bit to the same trip that we did with the chevy bolt um, obviously the Tesla has more range and that makes it a lot easier. Also the Tesla is more efficient at higher speeds than the Chevy Bolt. The Chevy Bolt is extremely efficient between about 45 and 60 miles per hour. In there you can stretch it really really good and get a lot of extra range out of it. Uh, but once you're going 80 it's just wasting away and so the Chevy Bolt is really not made for high speeds. Compared to the Tesla, the Tesla is still very efficient at high speeds. So we've been going 80 on the interstate and it's really not an issue. Uh, yes, we got a bigger battery, but still it is more efficient. It is a bigger car. It is a heavier car. Um, so 
it is it definitely is a step up from the Chevy Bolt there's no doubt about it also I mean it's more comfortable to ride in this uh, all the features in this car are really cool um, there's actually a couple features in the Chevy Bolt that I like better which one of them is the automatic automatic uh, heated seat feature that is really cool in the Chevy Bolt the Tesla doesn't have that so you got to turn your heated seats on you got to turn them down you got to turn them off while the Chevy Bolt takes care of that for you so that there's definitely something some of the things that uh, the Chevy Bolt has are better than the Tesla but if you're driving long range and you travel a lot the Tesla is uh, makes it easier makes it a lot easier also the charging in Helena due to the supercharger was super easy and this was a version 3 supercharger so I mean in 25 minutes or less we were from under 10 percent up to 80 percent and uh, really I mean super fast so can't beat that we definitely need more DC fast chargers to make it easier to travel also with other cars um, but uh, yes uh, Tesla still has the top spot I guess if it comes to long range and traveling um, but that said you can do it in a 2020 Chevy Bolt because we did it we proved that and as infrastructure charging infrastructure will improve here in the near future um, the Chevy Bolt will be able to do more and more traveling so well we probably will take the Tesla again next time just because we can travel faster it takes less time and we have the supercharger in Helena uh, no doubt about that but uh, currently we're pretty much only driving the Chevy Bolt we kind of leave the Tesla sitting most of the time the Bolt does most of our running around that we need to do or pretty much it does all of the running around in a, around here other than long distance travel the Chevy Bolt does great and uh, it's a great little car so they're obviously a little different I mean the price range is a bit different but the Chevy Bolt is an MSRP of forty thousand four hundred dollars while this uh, Tesla all-wheel drive here long range is sixty thousand dollars so you expect a little more for sixty no doubt about it but overall I think Tesla still holds the top spot for traveling comfortably and having a charging network available just that's the key so we need more chargers and um, as I pointed out in a previous video uh, contact Electrify America and let them know where you would like to have DC fast chargers and you don't need them at home okay you don't need them close to home that's not where you need a DC fast charger because you can usually charge up at home and yet that's where you have time to charge it up overnight and then you can travel 100 150 miles and that's where you need the DC fast charger so you can do your trips so please reach out to Electrify America on their website on Twitter on Facebook and tell them where and why you would like to have a DC fast charger all right so again you can drive an EV in rural Montana if you can drive it in rural Montana you can pretty much drive it anywhere it is possible to do almost anything with EVs today don't forget to give us a thumbs up on this video share this video with family and friends leave a comment down below comments help with the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people um, so if you just say hi in the comment that's fine we appreciate any comment uh, we appreciate those that are positive about EVs even more than the negative ones but that said this is it for today thank you for watching goodbye